Welcome to Harrogate District Hospital Hip Replacement Enhanced Recovery Programme. This information has been put together by the therapy team to ensure you know how to look after your new joint. To allow the muscles to heal and reduce the risk of the hip dislocating, it is important that you follow some strict precautions in the first six weeks. We'll discuss more of those in a moment. It is important you watch this film carefully, perhaps with a friend or relative, and ensure you understand the changes to home life, lifestyle and exercises that are required in the first six weeks after surgery. By working with a therapy team whilst on the ward and taking their advice, you can ensure a good result from your surgery and get back to a normal lifestyle. Why have a hip replacement? Total hip replacement is a surgical procedure in which damaged parts of the hip joint are replaced with an artificial joint. The artificial hip itself is made up of two parts a cup-like device that fits in the hip socket and a stem with a ball on the top which is inserted into the thigh bone. By replacing your hip with an artificial joint, hip replacement surgery can relieve your pain and help you get back to enjoying normal, everyday activities again. Protecting the joint for the first six weeks, you need to protect the joint and allow it to heal. You are advised to follow a few simple rules. Do not twist your operated leg in or out while sitting or standing. Do not lift your knee on your operated leg higher than your waist or hip. Or bend your body down onto your thighs. Do not cross your legs, knees or ankles. Pre-admission Preparing yourself for your new joint. It is very important that you are physically well enough for your surgery. Fitness is something that you can start to work on today. Start doing the exercises that you will be shown later in this film. But even short walks outside and walking a dog are excellent forms of exercise. You should try to quit smoking, as this can delay healing, and try to keep your weight close to that recommended for your height. This will avoid unnecessary complications. Get used to eating a healthy diet, as this will aid recovery. Medical pre-assessment. Prior to admission, you will be required to attend the pre-assessment and admissions unit for a thorough medical checkup, which may include blood test, ECG and a routine MRSA screen. If the nurse picks up any signs of infection, such as urine, chest, dental and foot conditions, these must be treated before surgery, so please consult your GP. At this appointment, which could last several hours, you will also be given the opportunity to ask questions about the different types of anaesthetics. Preparing your home. Plan ahead and think about the support you might need when you return home, usually around two to three days after surgery. Get used to seeing possible hazards in the home, such as loose carpets, rugs and wires and if possible, remove them. Place a table next to where you will normally sit. Good heating and lighting is important. A sturdy banister is advisable on the stairs. Rearrange the cupboards in the kitchen so that the most frequently used items are easily within reach. Ensure that everything is in good working order and to hand. Remember, you are advised not to bend down, but if you do have to reach down, remember to put your operated leg out behind you. You must ensure that your furniture is the correct height for you. Sitting onto furniture that is too low could put unnecessary strain on your new hip and increase the risk of the hip dislocating.
your occupational therapist will tell you what height furniture you require and will either give you advice about how to adapt your furniture or advise whether alternative furniture is required. If you need to make any changes to your home, do so before you come into hospital. Don't leave these changes to the last minute. Things to bring into hospital with you. Pack a small case. A list of the things you may need is in your information book. Shoes, slippers or sandals must have a strap or enclosed heel so that they do not easily slip off your foot. Older, loose-fitting footwear may be a benefit as it is likely that your feet will swell. It is important that the wound is easily visible. So gentlemen, you need to bring shorts and ladies a skirt, dress or shorts. Oh, don't forget your toiletries, towel and medication, plus the walking sticks and your information book. Day of admission. This could either be the day before or the day of the surgery. You will be advised which. You are advised to report to either the ward directly or to the pre-admissions and assessment unit. A nurse will escort you to theatre. We try to encourage patients to walk to theatre if they're able to. Returning to the ward from theatre. You will return to the ward after a couple of hours, escorted by a nurse. You may require oxygen for a short time. This is given by a nasal cannula. You may have a drain leading from the side of the wound. In the first few hours after you arrive on the ward, the nurses will do regular checks of your blood pressure, temperature, blood oxygen levels, and pulse. You will have Floatron stockings wrapped around the lower half of each of your legs. There is an air pump attached to the bed, which inflates and deflates the stockings, squeezing the calf muscles alternately and reducing the risk of a deep vein thrombosis. These Floatrons will remain on your legs whilst you are on the ward. You must not unplug these yourself as you will be bending down too far. A member of staff will help you. To aid circulation, you can also move your feet up and down or in a circle regularly. Your hip will hurt and pain management is very important. You will be regularly asked to score your pain using a score of 0 to 10, where 0 is no pain and 10 is the most pain. You will be prescribed analgesia, but if you do not feel that it is controlling your pain enough, then speak to your nurse immediately so that they consult a doctor and have the dose altered or try a different medication. Continue to take the painkillers on a regular basis because if you are in pain, you will not want to exercise or walk and you won't make the best opportunity of your time on the ward. Getting out of bed. After a couple of hours, the sensation in your leg will have returned and your pain should be under control. Once you are able to show staff that you can control your muscles, they will help you out of bed to use the commode or sit on your chair. Turn your bottom and bring your feet gently down to the floor. Try not to hold your leg stiff. Just allow the weight of your leg to bend naturally. To stand up, Push your hands on the mattress and take weight through your strong, your unoperated leg. Take hold of the Zimmer frame and stand up straight. Using the Zimmer frame, you'd be able to turn to sit into the chair. Move the Zimmer frame forward. Take your operated leg part way into the frame and move your unoperated leg forwards to meet it. Step around with small steps, trying to keep your knee as straight as you can. For stepping backwards, take your unoperated leg back first, followed by your operated leg and the Zimmer frame. To sit down, slide your operated leg forwards just a little, feel for the chair arms 
and gently lower yourself to the seat. Getting dressed. You are expected to get washed and dressed every day whilst you are on the ward. The occupational therapist will assess you to ensure that you are able to get clothing over your feet easily. As you are not allowed to bend down for the first six weeks, you will be loaned equipment to help you to dress your lower half. To dress your lower half, use the easy reach. Always dress your operated side first and undress it last. Hold the material that is going over your operated side with the easy reach and loop it over your foot. If you are able to lift the other leg in as normal, you can do so. If it is uncomfortable, use the easy reach for the opposite side also. To put socks on, use the sock aid. Rest this against your tummy and ease the sock, pop sock or stocking onto the plastic aid. Catch the top of the garment on the notch, then making sure the heel is underneath, hold the tapes and drop the aid to the floor. Slide your foot inside, a little talc may help if your feet are hot, then pull the tapes smartly together. The aid will pull out leaving the sock on your foot. To put shoes or slippers on, use the shoehorn. Slip-on shoes are easier, but your footwear must have a back to them for safety. Bed exercises. You're expected to do your exercises three times a day. The physiotherapist will supervise you doing your exercises once a day, but you are expected to do them twice more by yourself. After surgery, the exercises will be more difficult, so by practicing them now, you will become familiar with them and start to strengthen the muscles around your hip. Static quads exercise. With your thigh straight and your toes pointed to the ceiling, tighten your thigh muscle, hold it for five seconds, and relax. Repeat 10 times. In a range quads exercise, place a rolled up bath towel under your knee and lift your foot up to straighten your knee. Lower your leg slowly. Repeat 10 times. Hip flexion exercise. Lying on your back, bend and straighten your hip and knee by sliding your foot up and down. If you find this difficult, sometimes a plastic bag under your foot can help. Repeat 10 times. Static glutes exercise. Lying on your back, squeeze your buttocks firmly together. You'll feel yourself rise up. Repeat 10 times. Hip abduction exercise. Lying on your back with a plastic bag under your operated leg, gently slide your leg out to the side and then back to the middle. Repeat 10 times. Standing exercises. Heel raises. Stand up straight holding something secure. Raise your heels off the floor, coming up onto your toes, and then gently lower back down again. Knee bends. Stand up straight, holding something secure. Gently bend your knees as if you were going to perch on a stool, then slowly rise back up into standing. Only bend your knees a small amount. Single leg stand. Stand up straight, holding something secure. Lift your unoperated leg off the floor so that you are standing on the operated leg. Stand in this position for a maximum of 30 seconds. Hip abduction. Stand up straight, holding something secure. 
take your operated leg slowly out to the side and then back in again. Keep your foot in a straight line. Do not turn it out to the side. Stay upright, don't lean over. Repeat 10 times. Hip extension. Stand up straight, holding something secure. Bring your leg backwards, keeping your knee straight. Do not lean forwards. You need to repeat each exercise 10 times. You can refer to these exercises either in your booklet or on your computer by going to YouTube and typing in Harrogate Hospital Hip Exercises. Walking The physiotherapist will help you to progress from the Zimmer frame to walking sticks. When walking with the Zimmer frame, first of all put the Zimmer frame forward, step halfway into the Zimmer frame with your operated leg and then bring your unoperated leg up to meet it. When walking with the sticks, first of all put your sticks forward together, imagine an invisible line between your sticks, take your operated foot to that line and then bring your unoperated foot up to meet it. As your muscles become stronger, you'll be able to progress your walking, first of all putting your sticks forward, stepping forward with your operated leg, and then stepping through with your unoperated leg. As your confidence grows, you'll be able to adopt a normal walking pattern of moving your opposite arm and opposite leg together. Once comfortable on sticks, you will practice stairs. If you have a banister rail, use it. To go up the stairs, make a T-shape with your sticks and step up with your unoperated good leg. Then bring your other leg up onto the same step and then bring up your sticks last. To go downstairs, Place your stick down onto the step, then step down with your operated leg, followed by your unoperated leg. If you have no banister rail, follow the same sequence, but use two sticks. If you have to carry things up and down the stairs, use a small rucksack. The occupational therapist will check that you are able to get on and off the toilet, bed and chair and that the furniture at home is the correct height for you. If your toilet is low, a seat raise may be provided. Getting on and off the toilet. To get on and off the toilet, first step back so that you can feel the toilet behind the back of your legs. Slide your operated leg forwards and with both hands on the seat of the toilet, gently lower yourself. To stand, push from the toilet seat and then use your unoperated good leg to raise yourself. And as you stand, bring your operated leg back underneath you. Getting on and off the bed. To get onto the bed, sit on the edge and gently ease yourself back across the mattress with your hands until your legs are well onto the bed. Move your legs around so that you are in the correct position. To get off the bed, do the reverse. Bathing and showering. You must not get the wound wet until it is healed. So initially, you will need to strip wash. You are not allowed to get into the bath for six weeks, even to use an over bath shower but you are allowed to use a cubicle shower as soon as the wound is dry and the dressing over the wound has been removed, usually around two weeks after surgery. Washing your hair. You can wash your hair standing at the basin or sink. Stand with your feet slightly apart to give you better balance. Bending forwards gently at the hip, put your head over the basin or sink 
and use a jug or shower attachment. Foot care. You may return to cutting your own toenails and washing your feet after six weeks. If you still feel uneasy about bending this far, either ask for help, use long-handled scissors, or make an appointment with a chiropodist. Kneeling down. You may kneel down after six weeks. The safest way to kneel is to do a single-legged kneel, where you kneel on the knee of the operated side only. This means that your unoperated hip has to bend, whilst the operated hip stays extended and in a safer position. For those patients living alone, an assessment in the kitchen will be undertaken. Think about where you eat your meals. You won't be able to carry anything when you have two walking sticks. Visiting times. Due to the number of patients on the ward, some people will have therapy treatment during visiting hours, which are 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. But unfortunately, this is unavoidable. Returning home. We recommend a daily short walk. Take care if it's slippery underfoot. You'll soon learn how far you can go, but don't overexert yourself. Rest for at least an hour a day on the bed, as rest is important for wound healing. Don't sit for long periods, as your hip could stiffen up. Get out of the chair and walk around the room at least once an hour. Continue to do your exercises three times a day for the first six weeks after your surgery. Remember, you can refer to these exercises either in your booklet or on your computer by going to YouTube and typing in Harrogate Hospital Hip Exercises. Your consultant will advise when to return to work or recommence your hobbies. This is dependent on the type of work and hobbies that you have. You can return to swimming once your wound is dry, but it often takes eight weeks to have the confidence to walk along the poolside. You should not fly for at least six weeks after surgery, and then only for a short-haul flight of up to four hours. You must wait three months before a long-haul flight. This is because of the increased risk of a blood clot in your deep veins. Sexual relations can recommence after six weeks. We recommend that the person with the joint replacement lies flat on the bed with the partner on top. Getting into the car. To get into the car, ask your driver to park sensibly away from the curb and put the seat as far back as possible. Step up to the car and turn, so that you can sit down onto the seat. Swing your legs into the footwell. You're allowed to travel home from hospital in the car, but then within the first six weeks, you're only allowed to travel as a passenger for emergency journeys or advised by your consultant. Having a hip replacement is hard work. Although we're here to help, the hard work is yours.